So I will talk um, today about uh, modeling human reasoning about conditionals. So um, the um, broader research program uh, into which uh, this paper fits um, is that of um, developing a comprehensive computational cognitive theory of human reasoning. So um, what do we mean by uh, comprehensive here? So um, it uh, should uh, cover many different reasoning tasks. So we don't want um, a theory that is just um, um, kind of specifically geared to, to some very specific um, uh, reasoning task, but one that um, encompasses um, uh, many different uh, reasoning tasks. Um, and uh, by computational, well, we actually mean two things. Um, on the one hand, it should be um, a formally specified um, theory, uh, and also ideally it should be um, efficiently implementable. Um, so this second one, I mean, of course, for some uh, human reasons, uh, uh, there might be um, like uh, people might actually use reasoning techniques that cannot be efficiently implementable, like when when there is like deliberation where people actually may take a long time to to think up some 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 solutions to, to some tasks. But but here we are more focused on on tasks that 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 people can quickly respond to because that's like often the things that, that get tested in um, in these um, uh, uh, psychological experiments that, that we look at uh, here um, uh, uh, where people, well, I mean, either give, give a quick answer or just say that they don't know the answer. And, and so we want to have like um, a cognitive theory of, of, of how they uh, um, deal with such a reasoning task uh, that is uh, somehow efficient and then maybe maybe quickly says that while no, no answer can be given, that can also be a possibility. Um, um, so the idea is that um, given a certain reasoning task, um, the theory should make predictions about how likely humans are um, to give certain responses. Um, and um, of course, we want these uh, predictions to match um, empirical data as much as possible. Um, and these empirical data, I should uh, point out already now, um, uh, the actually uh, for many decades already, it has been come clear in the empirical um, um, research in this area, humans often deviate uh, from the from classical logic in, in the way they um, inferences in, in well certainly in some such psychological experiments and um, often they do so in a, in a systematic way. So we also want to um, be able to predict these systematic deviations from, from classical logic, <clears throat> and um, also the theory. Um, should um, not only um, predict uh, like the final response uh, that, that people make, but um, I mean, we, we ideally we want the, um, the the theory to tell us something about um, what is internally going on in, in the reasoning process. And in one one way we can get to that uh, uh, um, in a relatively simple way in, in these uh, kind of experiments is 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 that uh, we we look at um, how long people uh, take to to respond to certain questions, and um, and then. We ideally want uh, that um, the theory can also predict that by um, saying, okay, maybe certain tasks require more reasoning steps than other tasks, for example, or more, compli more, more complex reasoning steps, um, and so take longer. So, so that would already um, be a hint towards um, actually getting the, the, the internal reasoning processes uh, right, rather than only the outcome. <clears throat> okay, so um, now um, I'm going to talk about the weak completion semantics. Um, so this is um, a cognitive. Uh, theory uh, based on abductive logic programming um, and um, well as a as a logic it's it's non-monotonic uh, three valued um, and um, the the logic programming um, semantics approach taken here is um, is actually quite similar to the Kripke Keeney semantics that some of you might know um, the main difference is um, that uh, instead of um, using the Clark's completion, we use uh, something called the weak completion. That's where the name comes from. Um, so here, um, it's actually very similar to the Clark's completion in case you know that one. So what you do is when you have a, a logic program, um, when you've got um, clauses of this form that have the same head, in this case, A, then you um, merge them to a single expression um, of this form um, where all the, the bodies um, are, are disjuncted. And then after you do that, you just replace um, this um, implication of, of, of your rule by a by implication. And then you just treat it like a, 
um, like a by implication over over three valued logic basically. Um, and uh, so actually all of that sounds very similar to, to Clark's completion in case you know that the, the, the main difference um, is that in Clark's completion you would also um, actually for, for undefined so, so for for atoms that are not defined by any rule you would add um, something like a is equivalent to um, falsity um, and, and that one we don't do here um, so the undefined ones we just don't have any information about them that's that's the main difference between three completion and Clark's completion um, and then what we do with this at the end is similar as in Kukikini semantics we we pick the knowledge minimal three value model of the of the weak completion of of the program. Um, okay, but this is I mean this is only like the, the logic programming semantics view. There's, there's other aspects to weak completion semantics that I will explain later on based on examples. Um, so, um, but first let me talk a bit about um, what are some um, applications uh, of the weak completion semantics that um, have um, been made in the past. Um, so basically, based we can already say based on, on those past applications that weak completion semantics is a comprehensive cognitive theory that covers multiple uh, reasoning tasks in a, in a consistent way. So um, for example, there's Burns suppression task. This is a um, reasoning task where, where people are confronted with, um, with a conditional and then uh, one or two facts uh, that relate to, to, to either the antecedent or the, the consequence of the conditional. Um, and, um, or, well, actually, they might maybe actually show two conditionals as well. Um, and uh, uh, it has been shown in, in, in multiple experiments um, that, that people um, actually um, exhibit uh, non-monotonic non um, res uh, response patterns in the way that they respond to this uh, to, to task. And um, this uh, can be uh, correctly uh, modeled um, by the weak completion semantics. Um, so another task, um, waste and selection task, um, that is one where, where people have to um, uh, make uh, judgments about uh, the truth value of, of certain conditionals, um, um, or rather they have to, it's quite a complex task actually, they have to say like which, which facts do they need to check in order to um, check the truth value of a certain conditional. Uh, and the interesting finding is that like, um, if you do this task, um, with a certain kind of like social setting of, of, of certain things that, that, that people are used to reason about, um, then people will actually get quite close to, to what you'd expect from classical logic. Whereas if you show it to them in an abstract way, um, they uh, deviate quite significantly from, from, from classical logic. Um, and that of course, I mean, can be explained by saying, okay, in the, in the social case, um, uh, they, they are uh, more used to, to, to to the to the rules that, that are being considered there, and in the abstract cases, they, they might just be a bit overwhelmed by the difficulty of the of the task. Um, but still, we want to be able to um, to correctly model um, uh, what, what what kind of uh, um, responses people come up with, even in, the, in this abstract case. And, and that has also been shown to to be uh, uh, can be modeled in, in the weak completion semantics. And then with just a, a little switch in in, in the in, in the formal modeling. We can also explain the, the social case that, that matches the, the classical uh, logic. Then syllogistic reasoning. So I mean, syllogisms, as you might know, that goes that's something that goes back to Aristotle, the very early days of logic. Um, uh, Aristotle considered a handful of, of, of syllogisms as, as, as certain reasoning patterns involving involving um, quantifiers. Um, uh, but if you look at um, uh, a generalization of, of this Aristotelian notion, you, you find that you can actually construct 64 different kinds of syllogisms, some of which are correct in classic logic and some of which are not correct. Um, but then in, in, in this uh, approach of like looking at the human reasoning, we're, we're more interested in, in what, what humans will tell us um, uh, about the correctness rather than what classical logic will tell us, uh, that there is some deviation, of course. Um, and then um, there was actually like um, a total of 13 cognitive theories that in 2017 uh, competed to, to predict correctly um, um, the, the the results of a certain um, um, experiment on, on on how humans reason about syllogisms, and of this thirteen, um, the weak completion semantics actually had the best predictions. Um, well, and then there was also something uh, about ethical decision problems, like the trolley problem, which involved counterfactual reasoning. So that was also uh, modeled in the weak completion semantics. Okay, so that was just an overview of what has been done in the past to give you. A, a bit of context um, that this is already a, a comprehensive uh, cognitive theory. Um, now in, in, in this paper, what we looked at is, is a new 
um, a reasoning task that involves um, conditionals. So it's a bit similar to burn suppression task that I mentioned first on the previous page, and that involves a, a conditional and an additional fact. But it's actually a bit simpler because in burn suppression task, sometimes we have two conditionals, or yeah, a bit more complex situation. But, but here it's always just one conditional, one fact, um, but uh, different variations. So I'm going to give some examples. So uh, this one, um, if it rains and the proofs must, <coughs> sorry, if it rains and the roofs must be wet, it rains. Well, I mean, this is a, a very simple a case of, of modus ponens. People will uh, just uh, say, well, okay, then the roofs are wet. Um, in our experiment with 56 uh, people, um, all 56 of them in, in this particular case responded, yeah, the roofs are wet. Um, but then if you show them something like, uh, if it rains, then the roofs must be wet. It does not rain. Now here, um, in classical logic, we would not be expected to be able to, to conclude anything uh, additional from, from these uh, premises. Um, but actually, 45 out of the 56 participants responded, uh, yeah, the proofs are not, the, the roofs are not wet. Um, so they treat the, the conditional more like a biconditional, one could say. Um, and uh, well, I mean, we could also say that this is maybe an inference of, of, of background knowledge. I'm going to come back to that uh, a bit later. Um, so, but anyway, it, it's not a classical inference in this, in this context. Um, then another example would be uh, if Maria is drinking alcoholic beverage in a pub, then Maria must be over 19 years of age. Maria is not over 19 years of age. So here we negate the, the conclusion of the conditional. And of course, classically, we want to then be able to conclude um, the, the negation of the uh, antecedent. Maria is not drinking alcoholic beverages. And actually, in this case, 55 out of 56 people uh, get that right. Uh, but then in a very similar case, um, where basically the, the, the formal structure is the same, um, if Nancy rides a motorbike, then Nancy goes to the mountain, and Nancy does not go to the mountain, then actually it's only 35 out of 56 people respond Nancy does not ride her motorbike. And 19 people responded, nothing follows. And then there's these two outliers. So some I'll just say Nancy does ride her motorbike. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same logical form in these two last examples. Uh, but nevertheless, um, in the second case, significantly less people uh, make this classical uh, modus tollens inference. Um, but this was actually predicted by weak completion semantics because in weak completion semantics, we don't only um, look into the logical form. We also, um, as I will explain now, we uh, have a certain uh, classification of uh, conditionals um, um, that we can take into account uh, to make different predictions even, even when the, the logical form is the same. So this classification actually goes back to, um, to an analysis of Burns suppression task um, um, and um, it involves considerations of uh, background knowledge that might be used uh, in certain scenarios. So this is actually um, something that is not uh, cannot be made fully formal. I mean, you can't like in a fully formal way from the uh, natural language conditionals that we show to people predict like the, the classification. It's rather a, a pragmatic uh, thing where, where we, we as um, um, designers of, a, of, of, of an experiment, we say, okay, um, here, uh, a certain kind of uh, background knowledge can come into play and, and, and based on that we we make this classification so it's actually but it's a very simple classification we just have two um two binary switches basically that uh, in, in that classification so one is that uh, between the distinction between a necessary or a non-necessary um, antecedent so for example um, and here we, we really just take uh, like like what is like common sense uh, common sense we, uh, uh, assumptions that, that we assume will will play a role in, in the um, uh, reasoning about about these cases. So um, when it's uh, uh, when we say if, if it rains, uh, the roofs must be wet, we can actually see, well, um, just from a common sense point of view, um, the rain is kind of necessary uh, for the roofs being wet, because I mean, how else would the roofs possibly be wet uh, if not through the rain? I mean, if it was maybe something else like the lawn being wet, you could say, okay, maybe um, there's some also other possibilities like like a sprinkler might have made the lawn wet uh, but i mean for the roofs i mean we, it's just common sense like like no one would put a sprinkler on the roof so, so like what else would it be like like uh, just by by that kind of like reasoning of like our background knowledge of the world we would say okay uh, it's kind of necessary here that, that it rains whereas in the other example uh, uh, like if, if nancy rides a motorbike nancy goes to the mountains like there's no necessity involved like she could go to the mountains through some other um um, means of transportation. It doesn't have to be through the motorbike. Um, and then the other distinction we make is between obligation conditionals versus factual conditionals. So um, here, um, well, uh, let me just explain this through, through examples. Um, so we had this example with like if Maria um, is drinking alcohol 
beverage, uh, she must be over 19 years of age. Um, this we consider an obligate, uh, well, th th this, this conclusion, she must be over 19 years of age, um, we consider it as an obligatory conclusion, uh, actually, because in this case, it, it even explicitly involves a, a deontic obligation that she's like actually um, uh, obligated to, to, to do a certain thing. Uh, but it doesn't have to be the deontic obligation, so that the name obligation condition is maybe a bit uh, misleading in that it can also just be something that we, uh, that we consider physically unavoidable, like uh, if it rains, the roofs must be wet. Um, I mean, in this example, we actually also made it explicit by, by the use of the word must, but it doesn't even have to be like that. We had some examples in our experiment where there was no um, explicit word like must in, involved, but, um, but, but just the, the, the background knowledge tells us that some of the, um, the conclusion is really uh, unavoidable when, when, the, when the antecedent holds. And, and in that case, we, we categorize it um, as an obligation condition. Whereas in, in something like um, um, if Nancy rides a motorbike and uh, then she goes to the mountains, um, the, the conclusion is not really obligatory in, in any way, like uh, considering our background knowledge, we could imagine, uh, well, she, she rides a motorbike uh, maybe to some other place, it doesn't have to be to the mountain. Um, so so we, we classify this as a factual condition, that's the, uh, the name we give to the ones that are not obligation conditions. Okay, so when we're designing the experiments, so, so we, um, uh, we took into account already this, this classification. We, we thought, okay, well, let's, um, I mean, with these two binary switches, we've got a total of four possibilities for, for the overall classification. And then for each of the four possibilities, we designed three um, uh, natural language conditionals that, um, uh, according to us, uh, three co authors, uh, uh, we, we agreed that, that uh, they fit well with, with this classification. Um, uh, so we had a total of 12 conditionals and uh, three in each of the uh, four categories. Um, and then um, based on, so, so I mean, okay, the classification is, 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 is like kind of like the informal part of, 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 um, uh, of our theory, but, but then the, uh, after you do the classification, all the rest is just uh, purely formal and, and then uh, the recompletion semantics just makes uh, different predictions depending on the classification, uh, different predictions of what people, what kind of conclusions people will make depending on whether you show the conditional together uh, with the antecedent or the conclusion or the negation of the antecedent or the negation of the conclusion for each of these four cases uh, and, and, and each of the four um, possible classifications that the weekly completion semantics will make different predictions and so we tested all of these combinations um, uh, so i'm just gonna uh, like uh, talk a bit through one particular um, case uh, just to give you a hint of, of what the weak completion semantics really does um, um, so it, the case i'm, I'm going to look at is the di denial of the consequence so you're given a conditional and, and you're given like um, the negation of, 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 of the consequence here. Um, and um, well, uh, what we do in general with all um, conditionals is we uh, translate them into logic program rules uh, using this license for inference approach, which basically um, uh, we treat the, the conditional um, as something uh, of the form, well, uh, if A holds and there is no abnormality, um, uh, then C holds. And then we um, so, uh, additionally uh, have this, okay, um, abnormality, uh, uh, we, we set to false. So um, uh, um, the, the the thing is that um, um, well, if you if you if you're used to logic programming, you might be wondering better, like what is this kind of rule doing? I mean, uh, a, a body that is such a set to false in, in most logic programming approaches, which does not have any inference. But in, in the weak completion semantics, it does because recall from from the earlier definition of, of the weak completion that uh, when when a, when a, when a when, a, um, when an atom is undefined, uh, that's treated. Um, that's not treated the same as, 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 as uh, stating that that atom is false. So, so it actually makes a difference to explicitly say uh, abnormality false. So, so, so but, but, this is, uh, um, but this is something that can be overridden. So, so you, you can say abnormality false is kind of like the default value, but it can be overridden. You, you can still make it uh, true by, by, by adding a rule um, that, that, that it is uh, abnormality if true would override this one. Um, so, um, and then um, for the fact uh, not C, uh, what we do is, well, because we already have um, a rule um, that defines uh, C, so that has C in, in its he head, um, we treat this not C um, as an observation that needs to be explained. And then we um, um, take this approach of um, abductive uh, logic programming, where um, we, we think of like, how, how could uh, an observation be explained by, by adding something to the logic program. And for this, we need a, um, a set of um, abducibles, which are things that could possibly be added to the logic program in order to explain 
uh, the observation. And in here, we, we take this this, un, this undefined antecedent. Um, we say that it can either be set to true or to false, and these can be like the two potential explanations. Um, and then uh, we see that uh, uh, yeah, there's actually only uh, one minimal explanation here, namely you may set A to false, um, then also C will turn out uh, false, and this is like what we have in the observation. So this is the only explanation we have for for not C. Um, and um, so by by what we call skeptical abduction, we, we get the conclusion uh, not A. So this just means we can in all minimal explanations we we basically set A to false. Um, um, so and this is actually what we also uh, so what we have as a prediction of the weak completion semantics in, in this case, and, and that it was confirmed in the experiment, and that uh, 55 out of 56 participants really concluded this negation of the antecedent in, in this in this reasoning task. Uh, Maria is not drinking alcoholic beverages. Um, um, but then, um, okay, this was also somewhat dependent on the on the classification because um, if you um, work with a factual conditional rather than obligation conditional, um, then we, what we do differently in the weak completion semantics in that case is that we will allow um, another abducible of this form um, that the, the, the abnormality can be set to true. So the idea here intuitively is that in, the, in this case of a factional conditional, we, we want to um, allow people to, to, um, to interpret the conditional in a, in a non-strict way. Um, um, and so this can be like, um, yeah, so we allow it in the sense of we, we allow this um, uh, abnormality to be set to false, but just as an abducible, not as a fact that we just add automatically, but as an abducible that can be added uh, as, a, as an explanation of the ob observation. And then um, uh, we, we've got an additional minimal explanation that is the one that precisely sets the abnormality to true. Um, and so we can no longer conclude the negation of A because here we've got an explanation where right? it does not hold. Um, and this is um, what we see. So, 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 so the idea of the weak completion semantics is that, is that some reasoners will, will, will use this additional abducible, not, not all of them. Um, and so this is, uh, explains um, why we now in this case just have 35 out of 56 uh, people um, uh, concluding, um, uh, well, well, only 35 conclude this uh, negation of the antecedent rather than in, in the other case where it was 50, 55. Uh, and so it's much less. Um, and this can be explained. Uh, uh, in this way. So, so the overall results um, of our um, uh, empirical study that we did for this paper was that um, the weak completion semantics in, in, in all the cases uh, correctly predicted the, the responses uh, of the majority uh, of, of participants. And then also um, it did um, uh, well in explaining some of the mi minority um, um, judgments that, that were significant, where a significant number of people deviated from the, from the majority. So for example, for the case that I just talked through, the uh, denial of the consequence um, uh, in the combination with a factual conditional, a significant minority responded, to, uh, nothing follows rather than the negation of the antecedent that was correctly pre predicted. Also, when you affirm the consequence and you combine it with a non necessary, uh, so a conditional with a non necessary antecedent, a significant minority responded, nothing follows. Um, and it was also correctly predicted. But then there was one case um, that was not correctly predicted. So um, for a denial of a non-necessary um, uh, antecedent uh, of a conditional, uh, actually a significant minority uh, responded, nothing follows, but we, we could not explain this using the weak completion semantics. Um, in the meantime, I mean, we did this experiment in January. In the meantime, actually we had a, a, a master student, uh, Meghna Badra, um, work uh, on this problem and, and um, her, her master thesis has uh, proposed a modification of the weak completion semantics that can account for this. Um, so the, the novel version of the weak completion would actually match the, the, the observations. But of course, this was like a post hoc analysis after the experiment. So that was something we, we did not predict correctly before, before the experiment. Um, and then also the weak completion semantics made some correct predictions about, about response times. Uh, so also in that respect, there was some uh, nice uh, results. Um, so the details you can find in the paper, of course. I will to briefly sketch at the very end uh, some ideas for future work. So. Um, we um, want to um, um, compare our theory more to other uh, cognitive theories uh, of conditional reasoning. For this, we need to like uh, determine uh, what are the, like the, the differences in, in which predictions uh, they make in, in diff for different reasoning tasks. Uh, um, now, one problem we, we were facing here is that some uh, cognitive theories are, are tr stated in rather informal terms. So, for example, one famous uh, theory that, that also deals with conditional reasoning is. Uh, mental model theory, and it also covers many other reasoning tasks, but um, uh, it's, it's stated in rather informal terms, so it's a bit difficult for us to 
to really make, make, make clear predictions, uh, well, to, to really clearly determine what predictions this theory would make for different tasks. Uh, so this here, a more formal exposition would actually help, um, but uh, we haven't found such a formal exposition uh, in, in the literature, unfortunately. Um, but uh, anyway, um, once uh, we have uh, somehow determined uh, uh, like the predictions of various theories, we, we can then design further experiments to, to check which which theory makes the best predictions, um, also maybe by, by focusing on experiments where, where, where the predictions are really different. Um, and, um, and then maybe depending on, on how, the, how this uh, works out, um, uh, it might be that in the future, uh, a new theory will have to be developed that maybe combines some ideas from the weak completion semantics with uh, some ideas of another cognitive theory. So maybe the weak completion semantics is not, is not the final word, but at least for, for, the, for the current moment, uh, it seems quite a good, um, uh, uh, quite a good match to, to, to the data that we have. Um, so uh, better than, than other theories that, that we know of. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening.